the news of the day here, if I could. Ford announcing it's removing its CEO, putting into place somebody who is heading up the autonomous vehicles or smart car division of the company. What does that say to you broadly about the direction uh, of this industry? You have a lot of traditional companies now getting into tech. Well, first of all, uh, on behalf of J.P. Morgan, thank you very much uh, for coming to our conference. Uh, phenomenal attendees here. We have about 200 companies presenting, 1,200 investors, and about 2,000 attendees. Uh, back to your question, I think it's a very smart move. Uh, what's happening, technology is always becoming very pervasive across every industry vertical. There's a massive disruption that's underway. Every industry, whether it's consumer, energy, utilities, healthcare, manufacturing, industrials, auto, they're going through a massive dislocation. And I think what we're finding is companies now are realizing mm. just by having technology is not enough it's going to become a very significant competitive advantage. So the question is, do you own them or do you buy them? And you, you will, we expect a significant amount of uh, trend in that fashion. We're 25% of our banking team is spending time with companies in non-tech. Mm. We would expect significant M&A coming. It may take a couple of years to come out of that. Now, autonomous is absolutely at the forefront. Uh, you can see where it's coming. The market believes by 2020, it's going to be mainstream mass production, which means the technology is going to be much earlier. And uh, there are various forces that are driving that. You know, one of them is Ubers and the Lyfts. Yeah. They're very incentivized to get this technology on the road. What are the challenges of, of brokering deals like these? If you have companies that are not uh, based in the same region in many cases as the tech firms, uh, are not of that background, how hard is it to find synchronicity, find complementarity uh, among those two different companies? I think. Uh, Companies, on an average, spend significant time in evaluating and tracking uh, companies with technology and specific fit. So it's not like they wake up one day and they just buy. Yeah. I think there's a significant amount of time and energy spent by companies, especially when they go to cross-border. Culture, cultural fit, you know, business models, compensation structures. Uh, all those things do factor. So, you know, we're finding uh, even within tech, whether it's traditional consolidation or the traditional tech buying a very high growth overseas, they track on average a company for at least a year to two years before they actually pull the trigger, small, big. When you look at the deal landscape right now, there was such a, a glacial amount of progress in the IPO market for better part of a year. Are you seeing an uptick? Are you optimistic that there will be an uptake, uh, uptick uh, in companies listing or in M&A going forward? So we are very optimistic on both the fronts. Uh, tech M&A, while it kind of started off a bit slow thus far, but we are very bullish on second half. Uh, if we look at our own pipeline, and JPM, on an average, we're always in the top two as an M&A advisor in tech. So it's a good barometer, and I would say we have some large deals, several mid-sized deals in the pipeline. So when we look at it, uh, we feel pretty good. The second half could all of a sudden pick up in a pretty dramatic fashion. And that's, by the way, very broad-based across every vertical within tech. Uh, and that's despite the fact, to your point, IPO markets are on a rebound. Yeah. We already have like almost nine IPOs in TMT and six in tech, which is all, already at the run rate of 16. We think this year, when we look at our own pipeline, we should be on track to getting close to what a normal run rate IPO should be within a year. What are the catalysts for that happening? Uh, is it just the state of the U.S. economy? Is it a new regime in Washington, D.C.? What's going to kickstart uh, the IPO market and the deals market again? I would say three things. The valuations are very attractive. Uh, you know, every index, NASDAQ, SOX, uh, software index, pick any index, everything is up versus last year, about two to three turns on an average. Uh, that's a big driver. I think the volatility is down in a, in a pretty dramatic way. I mean, we haven't seen a, you know, VIX in the tens or below tens uh, for the better part. Uh, I would also say the regulatory environment uh, easing or the perception uh, that's going to help uh, some of the tax reforms. I know the timing is a bit uncertain when that kicks in, but all these factors uh, and, and some of the track record of recent tech IPOs, how well they have done, uh, more and more companies are now thinking, hey, should we go public uh, la even later this year or 2018? We did a, you know, a count. We have over 100 companies in the tech pipeline 
in the next 18 months ready to go public. And these are some very large to, you know, more the average uh, billion, $2 billion market cap. Let me just ask you lastly about lessons learned here. You look at a company like Twitter, went public, has struggled since. What's the, the lesson that you can draw from a company like that? Is that a company that would see or have a willing buyer, do you think, on, on the horizon? It's a, it's a great question. We advise to every company uh, that is looking to go public, uh, Public going public is just a milestone. I think you should go public when you have a long-term sustainability. Now that a lot of times companies evolve uh, organically or through M&A, and I think it's important the companies in tech, especially given how things are changing so rapidly, that they are embracing both the organic uh, growth as well as M&A to keep evolving and keep being at the forefront. Uh, you know, on an average, I would say 60, 70 percent of the companies successfully do that. Mm. There's about a third to sometimes even half of the companies who fall below uh, struggle. I'm just taking broadly in tech. And I think uh, culture, how they form the foundation. And if you're not going to see that path, yeah. uh, we're finding more and more companies acknowledge and they sell. You're a great